J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with Midnight in Paris from Here's to Romance. <laughs> According to the calendar, spring is practically here, but the weather doesn't always follow the almanac, so you can't count on it. You can count on Jell-O, though, and Jell-O's color and fragrance and freshness will bring a real touch of springtime to your menus. And the springtime, it's quick and easy to get, for Jell-O is quick and easy to prepare. It dissolves in a moment in hot water. It's quick setting and it's delicious. For there's extra rich fruit flavor in Jell-O, it's crammed with it. You'll smell that tempting fruit fragrance the minute you open the package. And your first taste tells you, here is a swell dessert. No matter how you serve Jell-O, perfectly plain or decked out with fruits and nuts, it's always a favorite with the whole family. All six flavors are fresh and bright and tempting. All six are packed with that extra rich fruit goodness. Just be sure to get genuine Jell-O and be sure to order some tomorrow. Then you can treat the whole family to a real touch of springtime. was Midnight in Paris, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow being the first day of spring, we bring you Sulphur, Molasses, and Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello again, this is Jack Benny, your little spring tonic coming to you. So open your mouth, swallow, and make a face. Now, that wasn't bad, was it? You know, Jack, it, it's nice to see spring rolling around again. Yes, it is, Don. Trees are budding, flowers are beginning to bloom, bears and good humor men are coming out of hibernation. <laughs> yes, sir, and birds are coming back from the south. Oh, flocks of them. And you know, Don, yesterday I saw a robin in our backyard who just flew in from Miami. How did you know he was from Miami? He was building a nest with tickets from Hialeah Park. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Don, one thing about the beginning of spring, it sure peps you up, doesn't it? Oh, I've noticed that too, Jack. It makes you feel lively and energetic. Energetic? Why, Don, when I popped out of bed this morning and started to dress, I laced my shoes and didn't miss one single hole. <laughs> but honestly, Don, isn't spring the most marvelous time of the year? I mean, you walk out in the country and see babbling brooks, rabbits scampering around, snakes coming out of their holes. Did you call me, Jack? <laughs> No, Phil. Oh, then I'll crawl back in again. Yeah, <laughs> by all means. Hey, Phil, wait a minute. I nearly forgot. You know, I'm not going to be able to use your orchestra on next week's broadcast. You're not? Why? Well, listen, Phil. You too, Don. I've got a surprise for you. Tomorrow, I'm leaving for New York. New York? Yes, I'm just going for a little pleasure trip, see a few shows, and next Sunday, I'm going to broadcast from there. Well, aren't we going with you? No, Don. You're all going to get a week off. You, Kenny, Mary, and Phil. Does that mean I'm not going to get my check next week? Well, I won't tell you, Phil, but don't be surprised if your bank book misses a beat. <laughs> you'll, just have to, you'll just have to forget one week's salary. Oh, I'm supposed to forget, eh? Yes. Well, with the amount you pay me, I won't have to join the Foreign Legion. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You do all right. Hmm? Well, say, Jack, uh, who's going to be your announcer in New York next Sunday? Well, Don, uh, Harry Von Zell promised to help me out, and he's such an effervescent type, I, I think he'll be swell, don't you? Well, yes, if you like that sort of stuff. <laughs> well, now, of course, you will have to admit that he is very popular. You mean with me or with the public? With the public, and they ought to know. <laughs> Von Zell is an extremely capable announcer. I know, Jack, but I just can't picture Harry saying... Jell-O is America's favorite dessert. It comes in six delicious flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. It won't come from the heart. Oh, it won't, eh? Well, it better. <laughs> and I'll tell you who else we... Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. Did you have a nice time in New York? <laughs> I'm not going till tomorrow, Kenny. Anyway, how did you know I was leaving for New York? You borrowed a suitcase from me. Oh, yes. I forgot all about that. 
And say, Kenny, that's a very unusual bag. It's the only suitcase I ever saw with legs on it. Well, it's made out of fresh alligator. <laughs> oh, that's why the handle snapped at me. <laughs> mm, a fine thing, a live alligator suitcase. How am I going to get my clothes in? Well, wait till it yawns. <laughs> Well, I'll manage somehow. By the way, Jack, as long as I'm not going with you, what orchestra are you going to use next Sunday? Anyone but Abe Lyman. His music is all right, but I don't want that thug hanging around me. Thug? Yes. I'm going to New York for a vacation, not a breakdown. Why, Jack, you might have had a little trouble with Lyman, but, oh, he's not so tough. He's not, eh? Last fall when he was here, he gave me a slap on the back, and my socks changed feet. <laughs> I don't want any part of that guy. Well, you'll have to have music. Who are you going to get? Well, there's Whiteman and Olsen, Bester. Of course, Stokowski is in Italy. I can't get him. Now, let's see. Hey, Jack. What is it, Kenny? When Stokowski comes back, is Garber going to sing with his band? <laughs> yes, Kenny, if they can get Heifetz to play the bazooka. Bazooka? What's that? I don't know. Say, Phil, have you got any bazookas in your band? No, just palookas. Oh. Well, tell them to put down that jug and get ready for Kenny's song. Uh, what's it going to be tonight, Kenny? A little number called, I See Your Face Before Me. Well, that's all right, Kenny. Give them high-class stuff all the time. Hit it, Phil. Hold it a minute. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Right here, boy. It's collecting. Am I going to have trouble? <laughs> Never mind that. How much is it? Dollar fifty-four. Hmm. Here you are. Collect. I wonder who it's from. Hey, hey, fellas, it's from Abe Lyman. Lyman? What does he say? He says, Dear Jack, understand you are coming east next week. I suggest that you use my band if you want to see New York from both eyes. <laughs> hmm. We'll meet you at the station with my car and an ambulance. Take your choice. <laughs> Sincerely yours, Abe. Well, how do you like that for a threat? Who does he think he's bluffing, anyway? Or who does he... <laughs> Sing, Kenny. I'll use the band I want to use. They're not... <laughs> Somebody who could be truly worthy and true. Yes, I met my ideal one when I met you. I see your face before me, crowding my every dream. There is your face before me You are my only theme It doesn't matter where you are I can see how fair you are I close my eyes and there you are be nothing tragic in all my dreams of you oh, that my love could haunt you so no
See Your Face Before Me, sung by Kenny Baker. Well, Kenny, I won't be able to hear you now until a week after next. I suppose you'll be listening in next Sunday. Eh? Yeah. But say, Jack, who's going to take my place? Well, Kenny, this is really a surprise and a thrill. You'll never guess who's promised to come and sing for you and be just as good as you are. Lawrence Tibbet? No. <laughs> no, it's not a man. Grace Moore? No. Jeanette McDougal? <laughs> That's Jeanette McDonald, but it's not her. We're going to have Kate Smith. Kate Smith? Yes, sir. Isn't that swell? And that's not the only surprise. You know who else is coming on the program? Al Smith. No. <laughs> As, a... <laughs> As a special treat, we're going to have Fred Allen. Gee, it'll be good to see that lovable old louse again. <laughs> He's a pretty good guy at that. Huh? Well, how do you know Alan will appear, Jack? Did you ask him? Ask Freddie why he'll be tickled to death to go on with me. I bet he can hardly wait till I get to New York. And Don, believe it or not, we're going to have Bob Ripley, too. How's yes. that? Well. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello, Mary. Hello, Mary. Well, Mary, I'm glad you dropped in before we went off the air. Where were you? Oh, I went for a long walk and just sort of lost myself. Isn't spring wonderful, Jack? Yeah. Hats are budding in the windows. Dresses are beginning to bloom. Yeah, I know. And Hattie Carnegie is coming out of hibernation. <laughs> Say, that's a new bonnet you've got on there now, isn't it, Mary? Uh-huh. made it myself. Isn't it cute? Yes, but it's got a lot of stuff on it and such colors. Where'd you get the idea? From a fresh vegetable plate. <laughs> oh, yes. I see that poached egg on top there. <laughs> You know, Mary, women's hats this season are certainly the limit. Most of them look like something to eat. Yeah, you ought to see my new pork and beanie. <laughs> Say, Don, can you imagine if men wore the kind of hats that women do? Huh? Wouldn't it be awful? Yeah, imagine walking into a store. Uh, how do you do, sir? I'd like to see something in a bacon and tomato Stetson. <laughs> no mayonnaise on the crown. Please. Would you care for a pickle in the hat band? Sweet or sour? Well, the dill is very popular this season. Oh, I don't know what kind of get, but I do want a hat that's nourishing. Uh, why don't you get a New England boil fedora? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not kidding, Mary. That's just about how silly women's hats are. Hmm? Oh, uh, Mary, did Jack tell you that he's going to New York tomorrow? Oh, sure. Are you going to have a girl on the program, Jack? Well, Mary, Kate Smith has promised to help me out. First, she's going to read Kenny's lines. Then she's going to sing Kenny's song. Then she's going to play your part. And then you know what else she's going to do? Collapse. No. <laughs> but she will be very busy. Then. Is she going to take tickets at the door, too? Of course not. NBC has well-trained ushers for that. And I hope they let me in this time. <laughs> I'll bet you're all excited about going. What orchestra are you going to use? Well, Mary, I haven't decided yet. It's uh, between Paul Whiteman and Abe Lyman. Of course, Lyman is in New York right now. Uh-oh, the telegram's working. Well, Lyman is in New York. So is Paul Whiteman. I know, but Lyman is thinner than Whiteman, and it's a small studio. <laughs> and besides that, Abe has a trombone in his orchestra. Well, of course, every orchestra has a trombone. I know, but his has a derby hat. But all trombones use derby hats. Well, this one fits me, and let's drop it. <laughs> See, Mary, uh, Phil thinks I'm hiring Lyman because he threatened me in a telegram. Did he scare you? Why should I be scared of him? If you want to know something, Mary, Abe wears a charm bracelet. Well, watch out. There's a blackjack on it. <laughs> Just the same, that wire had nothing to do with my decision. Well, suppose uh, Whiteman threatened you. Don't worry about that. Abe and I will take care of him. <laughs> And by the way, I better answer Lyman's telegram. He was nice enough to offer his services. Uh, take a wire, Mary. Okay. Uh, dear Abe. Abe. Uh, how do you spell that? A-P-E? No, A-B-E. For heaven's sake, don't make that mistake. <laughs> you 
no, no. Ape, that's all I need. Hmm? Well, you told me he looked like one. I did not. I merely said that if he went to the zoo and fell in the monkey cage, they'd have a little trouble sorting him out. <laughs> that's all I said. I've never referred to Lyman as an ape. Well, you're going to pay him off in peanuts, aren't you? <laughs> oh, quiet. Now, write the telegram. Uh, dear Abe, Regarding your offer to appear on my program next Sunday night, I will consider the matter if you keep your price and temper down. Furthermore, I must insist that you come to rehearsal on time, if you can make it. Stop. <laughs> In conclusion, if these conditions are met, I will give the matter further consider consideration. Have you got that, Mary? Yes. Then read it back to me. Dear Abe, the job is yours. <laughs> It's not what I said, but let it go. Oh, wait, put another line in there. Please see that the boys in your orchestra eat their lunch before we go on the air. Because last time I was broadcasting knee-deep in herringbone. <laughs> Say, Jack, did Lyman's boys really eat during your broadcast? Yes, they did, Phil. Take out your dinner pails, man. We're as good as they are. <laughs> hey, cut that out! Now, that'll be all, Mary. Just sign my name. Uh, shall I send the wire collect, Jack? No, I better pay for it. He's liable to kill the messenger boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm all set now. I've got my orchestra, singer, announcer. Uh, I'll take it. Hello? Long distance? Yes, I'll take it. Hmm, I wonder who it can be. I hope there's no... Hello? Oh, hello, Fred. It's Fred Allen, fellas. Well, say, Fred, it'll be nice having you on my program next Sunday night. What? Well, look, Fred, none of the others are asking anything. <laughs> I said nobody else is getting anything for it. Well, this isn't like you, Fred. Aren't you being just a wee bit mercenary? Oh, all right, I'll give it to you. Yes, you can take my word for it. You'll get it before the broadcast. So long. Hmm, what a guy. What's the matter, Jack? Oh, nothing. Come on, what is it? Oh, Alan won't go on the program unless I give him my Boy Scout knife. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he cuts himself on the bottle opener. But... He wants your Boy Scout knife? Yeah, gee, I hate to give it up. I've had it since I was a tenderfoot. Oh, well. <laughs> He's not going to get the chain anyway. Say, fellas, i got to run home now and get ready, so carry on with the show, will you? I haven't even started packing yet. I'll come along and help you, Jack. Thanks, Mary. I'll come too, Jack. No, Kenny, you'll only be in the way. Well, it's my alligator, and I'm going to pack it. Oh, all right. <laughs> come along. Play, Phil. Gee, I hate to give up that knife. I just had it sharpened, too. <laughs>
That was Who Stole the Jam, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, folks, uh, we switch you over to Jack's house where he is preparing for his trip to New York. Mm, now, let's see. I've got my dark suit, two pair of shoes, my razor, shaving cream. Oh, Mary, did you pack my toothbrush? Uh, yes, it's in the box with your extra teeth. <laughs> My extra teeth, where? Right there. Those are my new cufflinks. <laughs> hmm. Extra teeth. Jack, where are your neckties and handkerchiefs? Uh, Mary's packing them, aren't you, Mary? Uh, yes, I put away your handkerchief, ties, socks, and cigars. I don't want my cigars packed. Such a long trip, they'll get dry. No, they won't. I put them in the bowl with the goldfish. <laughs> Mary, my pets aren't going to New York with me. They're not? No. Then I better take the canary out of the hot water bottle. <laughs> What? Why, Kenny, the bird will suffocate in that hot water bottle. He will not. I punched holes in it. <laughs> I knew I should have left you in the studio. Hey, Rochester. Yes, sir? How are you coming along with the wardrobe trunk? Okay, boss. I'm almost finished. You know, it's liable to be pretty cold in New York this time of year. I wonder if I should buy some long underwear. Don't bother. I sewed leggings on your shorts. <laughs> I suppose you glued earmuffs on my derby. No, I put them on your toupee. <laughs> well, they'll fit snugger that way. <laughs> Say, Rochester, you made my reservations on the train all right, didn't you? Yeah, I got you drawing room B in car 57. A drawing room? I told you I wanted a lower berth so I could get some air. Fine thing. Take the drawing room. Kenny will punch holes in it. <laughs> I never can get what I want. What am I going to do with a big drawing room? Maybe you can sublet it. <laughs> After this, I'll take care of the important things myself. I wish you would. I'm all in. All in? I don't work you so hard, Rochester. I never get any time off. You don't, eh? Why, the other night when I was walking into my sleep, you stuck a vacuum cleaner in my hand. <laughs> Well, I figured as long as you're wearing out the rug, you might as well clean it. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Look what Kenny just packed in your suitcase. <laughs> Kenny, take that mouse trap out of my grip. The mouse, too? <laughs> yes. You got everything in there but the family album. Oh, say, Rochester, you have to drive me down to the station in the morning, so you better put the luggage in the car tonight. Hmm? I think you better take a cab, Mr. Benny. Why, what's the matter with the car? We got a flat. A flat? Well, you can fix that before morning. No, sir. This is the whole rear end. <laughs> Fine thing. How did that happen? Well, I was backing out of the garage this morning. And you know that big concrete post that stands up in front of the driveway? Yeah. Well, it's laying down now. <laughs> Well, see that it's fixed before I get back. Answer the door. Yes, sir. Well, Jack, the grips are all packed and ready to go. You want to lock your trunk? No, I got to wait till Schlepperman brings my tuxedo. I had to have it cleaned and pressed. Cleaned and pressed? That old thing? Oh, my tuxedo isn't so old. Go on, there's a moth in there with rheumatism and both wings. <laughs> Mary, I know the moth you're referring to, and he's not that old. He isn't, eh? No. Then why do you feed him milk toast? <laughs> Leave me alone and don't drag Herman into this. Oh, hello, Andy. Huh? Hi, you bug. Just thought I'd drop in to say goodbye to you. Gee, I wish I was going along. So do I, Andy. Why don't you come? Well, Buck, we're awful busy right now on the farm. We've got a lot of plowing to do, and besides that, our goat just had a blessed event. <laughs> he did. That's funny. I didn't see anything in Winchell's column about it. Huh? <laughs> Me neither. He must be slipping. <laughs> Well, Andy, I imagine you're pretty busy this time of year at that, huh? Yes, sir. Ma's doing her spring cleaning, and when I left the house, she was washing Pa's beard. I see. <laughs> you ought to come up later. There's going to be a lot of fun. There will? Yeah, she's going to put it through the ringer. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I'd like to be there at that. Well, here's a ticket. Everybody's coming. <laughs> Well, Buck, I think I'll be running along now. I hope you have a nice trip. Thanks, Andy. So long. So long, Buck. Uh, don't let him sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> That's a hot one. Ah, <laughs> uh, 
Well, good old Andy, nice of him to drop over. Huh? Oh, Jack. Yeah? Where are your scissors? Here, what do you want them for? I want to trim your suitcase. There are a lot of neckties sticking out. <laughs> well, don't be so lazy. Open it and tuck them in. Answer the door. Now, let's see. What else? There's my overnight bag. That's all set. And Oh, Rochester. Hey, what's this in my hat box? I thought you might get hungry, so I made some jello in it. That's fine, but you should have taken my hat out first. If I was alone, I'd have been through an hour ago. Hello, Jackie boy. Oh, hello, Schlepp. Did you bring my tuxedo? Here it is. I fused it from my rummage sale. <laughs> well, give it to me. Now, look, Schlepp. Look at that lapel. I told, you to, I told you to take the stains out, and they're still there. What stains? There are stains remover spots. That's where they are. Well, it looks worse than when I gave it to you. Now, let's see. Here's the pants, the coat. Hey, where's the vest? I left it in my shop. Well, why didn't you bring it with you? It was too weak to make the trip. <laughs> Go right back and get it. Here, Rochester, put my tuxedo in the trunk. Huh? Yes, sir, I got it. Hey, don't fold it. It's brittle. <laughs> All right, Schlepp, how much do I owe you? Well, now, let me see. Are you in a good mood or do you want to talk turkey? Never mind the turkey. What do I owe you? Well, uh, pressing is 50 cents. For you, 45. Yes. Dry cleaning at 75 cents. For you, 80. Mm, I'm even again. <laughs> 80 and 45 is a dollar and a half. 80 and 45 is a dollar and a quarter. Well, I took a chance. <laughs> well, for this job, all you get is a dollar. Here. All right, I'll sue you for the rest. I whistle when I wake. I'm happy like a take. Bum, 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 bum. It's a fine mess he made out of my tuxedo. Look, Jack, it's on the floor. On the floor? Rochester, I told you to put this suit in the trunk. I did, but the new one keeps throwing it out. <laughs> well, don't get funny and put it, put it in the trunk and lock it up. Yes, sir. Well, that's a relief. Now, I'm all set to go. Say, Mary, how about you and I going out and getting a bite to eat, eh? Okay, Jack, I'm starved. Come on. You too, Kenny. Hey, where's Kenny? Oh, Kenny, where are you? Here I am. Let me out. Good heavens, Rochester locked him in the trunk. Rochester, open it and let Kenny out. The key's in there, too. You locked the keys in the trunk. That's the most stupid thing you've ever done. Wait till you look for your ticket. <laughs> oh, come on, Mary. Let's go out and eat. Well, what about Kenny? He'll suffocate in that trunk. Oh, that's all right. We'll punch holes in it. Come on. <laughs> Do you want to try something new and very swell for dessert? Well, here's a grand suggestion. It's one of the most delicious combinations you ever set on the table. Luscious, fruit-rich raspberry jello combined with prunes. And if ever a prune was glorified, <laughs> this is the time. And here's the way to make it. Dissolve one package of raspberry jello in hot water and chill until slightly thickened. Then fold in one cup of cooked seeded prunes cut in quarters. Chill until firm and serve with cream couldn't be much easier to make and when you've made it believe me you've got something shimmering red raspberry jello molded with delicious juicy prunes it's a swell combination it's an unusual combination and your family will want more so try this grand new dessert but be sure to make it with genuine jello for only jello brings you that delicious extra rich fruit flavor look for the big red letters on the box they spell jello the last number of the 25th program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night broadcasting from Radio City, New York. And I hope you'll all be listening in. Well, Mary, I've got to run over to Phil Baker's show and congratulate him. I heard this was his fifth anniversary. Well, I'll be sure and kiss Beetle for me. Yeah, I will. Good night, folks. This is the National Broadcasting Company.